Letterman, as we, you know, you and I are big Letterman fans. Oh, I had a tie on. This would this would make sense to people who are fans of right. David Letterman. When you look up David Letterman, it says, "What mistakes did David Letterman make?" Uh, right away, that's what people ask. Man. And and so, like Dick. the big the one of the big things about Letterman, besides his unbelievable career, the whole thing about late night and. You know, he was a different kind of late night host. Yeah. But he took, he was on a daytime and then he was supposed to be the successor to Johnny Carson and he got screwed over with Jay Leno, all that stuff. When you talk about David Letterman, a lot of people talk about the affair that he had. He revealed to viewers live on the air, well, not live, it's probably recorded, that he was being blackmailed. He was being blackmailed by someone who knew that he had sex with female staffers. Days later, instead of giving into this blackmailer, he apologized to his wife, Regina Lasco, uh, and mother to his son, Harry, for the hurt he had caused. And so he, yeah, he admitted his affair and he was like, he even talked about it on TV. <clears throat> um, I'm glad you folks are uh, here tonight and I'm glad you're in such a, a pleasant mood because uh, I have a little story that I would like to tell you and uh, the home viewers. There isn't much you can say when people. You stand up and own it. I was reading. I was reading an article today. Uh, Kevin Hart's reaction to, uh, to cancel culture and him saying, "Well, yeah, yeah. you got to If someone checks you, you know, I'm obviously paraphrasing. If someone's check checks you, you, you know, it's good to reassess yourself. Yeah. You know, I, I agree with what Seth Rogen says about it. <laughs> funny is funny. Yeah, you know, punching down isn't good. You know, I, I as a person that has subconsciously tossed hate freely, yeah, you know, I, I have to, I have to check myself because I take for granted that I, I know it's a joke. I think it's been a different world, and I have, I know I've been wrong about things I've joked about, and that's been hurtful to people. I just didn't think about it that way. I can't think about David Letterman extensively without thinking about that whole. Thing. See, that's the thing. I, I I had completely forgot about it until you brought it up just now. Well, I, I don't think about it every time I see him, but like any time oh. I'm having a conversation. Like, remember David Letterman? Oh, David Letterman was the best, man. He was great. Oh, and that big beard he's got now. Oh, and the sh- new show he's got is good. Awesome. Oh, he was always. But then I always think about his personal life. It's like his, it was always very, his personal life was always weird. Like, he never talked about it. Like, no oh, people, yeah, no, like he, when he, he was married to that woman, nobody knew who she was or anything. Yeah, no, he was like, very, like, he had a stalker. Like yeah. I, I would have remembered well, the stalker his, too. I would yeah. have remembered his stalker before his affair. The stalker would break into his house all the time and was really into, like, really into him. And I was wondering, like, what, what about David Letterman would cause him to have a stalker? And I guess there's no real answer. Like anybody could probably get a stalker on TV, but yeah. I think it's talk shows, like newscasters, sometimes have it because they're in your living room every night. Now we got a happy ending. They talk to you like they know you. What really happened on that Thursday here at Augusta High School that led to Chris Wood's death? The fuck is that? <laughs> Shit! <laughs> I'm dying in this fucking country ass fucked up town. They're telling you. They're looking dead you know. down the ca- They're looking dead down the yeah. barrel. <laughs> Wishing you a good night. And then we. <laughs> every night. Fuck it. I quit. Irving Raskin Levine, uh, who was an American journalist and longtime correspondent for NBC News. Uh, I don't know if you know this guy, but during his 45 year career, he reported for more than two dozen countries. He was the first American television correspondent to be accredited in the Soviet Union and became known for his distinct sign offs. Irving R. Levine, NBC News at the White House. David, when Letterman moved from NBC to CBS, somebody asked him, what would you miss most when you leave NBC? And Letterman said, back rubs from Irving R. Levine. Uh, <laughs> uh, and that was the final, his final, yeah. And so, <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> I want to tell you something else about Irving R. Levine. He would cross over into television 
uh, regular shows, and he also played on his national reputation by appearing on the series Murphy Brown. You mean the TV show Murphy Brown? The TV show Murphy Brown. With yeah, Candace Bergen? American and Robert sitcom. Pastorelli? Yes. Yeah, created by Diane English that premiered on November 14th, 1988 on CBS. The series stars Candace Bergen as the eponymous Murphy Brown. Is that how you say that word? I think so, yeah. A famous the investigative journalist and news anchor for uh, FYI, a fictional CBS television news magazine. Oh. Later for Murphy in the Morning, a cable morning news show. Did you watch a lot of Murphy Brown? I did. I well, didn't I, watch I, it much. I remember I was, being on. Uh, I was a big fan of Murphy Brown. I was a uh, yeah. I was a big fan of Candace Bergen. I'm still a big fan of Candace Bergen. Well, and I don't know if you remember. Do you remember the the biggest controversy about Murphy Brown, or the couple of controversies? Oh, the single mom thing. Yeah, the single mom thing. Yeah, like that, I, I, I had it's so funny I mean, that that was a controversy then. Well, I mean, portraying a single mom was a controversy. No, it wasn't just portraying a single mom, dude. It was portraying a successful single mom. That was the problem, you think? That that was the problem. It was it was uh, it was said that it was giving false impression to imp- already impressionable young women. Yeah, yeah. dude. Yeah, no, it it was it was a thing of rage in our household. It was a th- we watched Murphy Brown just if for no other reason is than you you support that shit. They did a major fiction reality blending on that show, and the mm-hmm. baby shower guests included Katie Couric, Joan London, Paula Zahn, Mary Alice Williams, and Faith Daniels. But Dan Quayle Tough criticized yeah this during the his ninety two speech. Millions of innocent people lost their lives because of the bigotry and Hitlerism that permeated Germany and other parts of the world. It was an obscene period in our nation's history. No, not our nation's, but in World War II. I mean, we, we all lived in this century. I, did, I didn't live in this century, but in this century's history. We did not have, matter of fact, we fought Hitlerism. So many better things to make fun of Dan Quayle about than the potato thing. Add one little bit on the end. Just think of potato. How's it? Potato. 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 He was a ventriloquist. He was one of the most famous ventriloquists of his time. Oh, do you know him personally? Uh, not personally, but I... Just the I, way you said that, you sound like you were bragging. <laughs> that's just because I'm an arrogant piece of shit. That's my <laughs> yeah. general tone no, of voice. No, you are not. I'm that's a white not. guy. You I'm are a white, white guy. guy. I'm a white guy. Oh, stop, oh, stop. Oh, 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 oh. I can't breathe. Stop. Oh, She's actually hurt. No, I think she is. Carlos Summer here. 